Hey everyone, it's the Drive to School podcast, and uh, my good buddy Pastor Richard is back with us. How you doing, my friend? Good to see you, Harrison. We uh, finally got some uh, sunlight here in North Dakota. The grass is greening up, and we're going to be hit with a bunch of rain this week. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy for the farmers, get some good moisture for them. So Count it. Yeah, things are taking off here too, so of course my mower broke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what it is. Right. All right. So um, we're coming up on summer break, but uh, you, you threw out a real good one uh, for probably the last one we'll, we'll do until the fall. Um, what does Jesus say you should expect from your pastor? That that makes sense because, I mean, we, we fight hard enough even just to sort of recognize that the guy is trustworthy or or relevant. We sort of add these words, especially when you sort of recognize that you're supposed to take your sins to him and that like that's potentially real bad, um, that, that he's more likely than not a lot older than you and how can he understand? And in all of it, I think we're kind of starting with maybe sort of some of the wrong questions because we're in every single one of them expecting your pastor to, to sort of do something. But when we were talking before the show, you, you went a very different way and it, it might be helpful. Yeah. I, I, I think maybe a good way to think about this is, is this idea of trajectory. And uh, you think of, well, I just think of the disciples, right? When, when they were getting close to Jerusalem they were like, you know, ooh, 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 you know, Jesus, we want to be at your right and your left hand side as as what you're going up, you know, to to take control of of Rome and 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 establish your worldly kingdom. We want to send you right and, and left. And to loosely paraphrase Jesus, he's like, do you realize the cup you're going to be drinking? Yeah, that that my trajectory is not upward and onward; it's what downward. And then that leads us into you know what what he says in John chapter ten, right, about the hired hand versus the shepherd. Now, obviously, pastors are not the good shepherd. Uh, pastors are under shepherds. And so, uh, but what does the good shepherd do? He doesn't run away uh, like a hired hand, but he what? He gives his life for the sheep. And so properly speaking, uh, the pastor's trajectory is always downward towards the sheep. It's always to the sheep themselves, which means that the pastor is called to suffer all things for the sheep, but for what purpose? And I would say the purpose is to to give Jesus, to proclaim the forgiveness of sins, uh, to meet in the midst of those uh, uh, struggles, uh, whether it's at the uh, bedside or whether it's at uh, the pulpit or whether it's in the office or whether it's at work or at the home. The pastor is always descending downward uh, into the suffering of the sheep uh, to proclaim the good news of the gospel, the light of the gospel in the midst of what? Sorrow and pain and suffering and sin. Right. This is not so much what your pastor is going to do, but but where is Jesus? And Jesus is is brought to you by your pastor. It's your pastor's job to bring you Jesus. And that's actually the way that we we answer the rest of those kind of scarier questions. Because, well, how do you take your sins to your pastor? Well, is he going to carry them himself or or is he going to bring Jesus? Right, right. And so, yeah, so I, I think I think properly speaking, and again, we talked about this in one of our Bible studies here this morning, and that uh, that uh, when, when a person desires to be a pastor, they desire a noble thing. I mean, no doubt about it. But at the same time, not everyone should aspire uh, so quickly to be a pastor because being a pastor is not upward and onward. Like I said, to 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 fame and glory and prestige, it's it's downward to the sheep. And so the word pastor itself means it's Latin for shepherd. And so what makes a shepherd a shepherd? Well, a shepherd is there for the sheep. And the sheep are always what? Uh, they're in need. And so the pastor's focus is always for the sake of the sheep, not to be uh, some hired hand that runs at the first sign of danger. Um, and also uh, the shepherd is there to, even when the sheep bite, uh, the shepherd is there to what? Uh, to patiently correct and rebuke and encourage uh, for the sake of keeping the sheep in the fold of Christ and his forgiveness of sins and his, and his rest. And so again, whatever thing the life brings, whatever life brings, whether it's up, down, left, or right, uh, the pastor is there towards the sheep with the gospel, with the forgiveness of sins, with the hope of the resurrection of the body and life everlasting to deliver Jesus and in and, and, and regardless of what circumstance. And it has to be that because I, I mean, we, we've got nothing else. Um, it, it's, it's not that we are smarter or holier or less sinful. It, it's that Jesus said, go and, and give good gifts. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And again, like we mentioned this before, you know, whether it's from the pulpit or from the bedside or whatever, it, it's always giving the good gifts, delivering the good gifts. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've said this before, actually on my Facebook page, I have, I have, uh, 
this phrase, you know, where you describe yourself on Facebook mm-hmm. and it says, it says husband and father and, and, uh, you know, pastor. And then I have a section there that says sacramental, a sacramental minion. And so if you think <laughs> about, uh, you think about those minions, right? Those little yellow guys with the one eye and, and, mm-hmm. and they, they serve, what is it? I always get the names. It's, they serve, what's the name of the, the evil Lord that they serve? I don't know, but in Despicable Me. You despicable me, yeah. I my kids would know the name, but anyway, a, a minion is one who just simply what serves another. And that's what a pastor is. He's a minion of Christ. And what does a minion of Christ do? He just delivers the gifts. He shares the gifts. Uh, he shares the gifts every chance that he has. And if the pastor has to suffer in the midst of that to deliver those gifts, then the pastor suffers. The pastor empties himself, uh, not to give of himself, but to give of Christ. And whether that's uh, in, in good times or bad, it doesn't matter. The pastor's there with Christ and his gifts. Absolutely. So what can you expect of your pastor then? What you can expect? Simple. Jesus hmm. and his gifts. Yeah. To be delivering a sacramental minion, delivering the gifts of Jesus in good times and bad, in season and out of season. Perfect. Thanks, Pastor. Good to see you, Harrison. You too. Take care, my friend.